I know. I know. He's absolutely gorgeous. Who's absolutely gorgeous? Oh, you're home! Oh, right, I've got to go. Yeah, Dave is back from the smoke. <laughs> All right, talk to you later. <gasps> Come here, the parallel parker of old London town. Uh, hold on. A, who's absolutely gorgeous. B, who without you were chatting to. And C, what's with the smoke? OK, that was my mate Cheryl, which I think was B. Mm. And we'll talk about our other mate's new boyfriend. And what was the last one? The smoke. Oh, I was just trying to sound cool for Cheryl's sake. Do you fancy this lad? It was an objective opinion. Now, are we going to argue about it? Are you going to come over here and kiss me? I'll take a kiss. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> That's a passing your driving test. <laughs> Twice to welcome your own. <laughs> and then three times for a laugh. <laughs> now, first things first. What's a Ted's house like? I know, yeah. She's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, no, just messing about. Right, I'll see you anon. No, I don't know what it means either, I just heard my granddad say it. Yeah, that's right, the gay one. <laughs> All right, let us by. Who were that? Remember Graham? Graham, Graham? No, just Graham. What does he want? He's told his way out, detention centre. Shut up. No. He's got released and just wondered what we're up to. I'll stay clear from that lunatic if I were you. He's coming around in a bit. Oh. And what are you doing till then? Well, I thought I might keep you company. Define company. Across from garage. Doors open. Oh no, but don't come in, see us naked. Hey! <laughs> How's my boy? Tina? I don't think so. Uh, she doesn't know it. What, you didn't tease you to her? No, she's a bad pupil. <coughs> so, when did you get out? Uh, yesterday, uh, but I had a massive row with my big fat man. <laughs> so, I thought I could keep on you so far, so good. Uh, I'll have a word with Gail, yeah, but she should be cool in the gang. So, uh, this car you want to borrow? Yeah, uh, I've got 300 quid, right, to put towards it. But I'm undecided what to go for, though. Yeah, I can get you a car for 300 big ones. Do you want our David, don't get into this. By the way, uh, you got dressed pretty fast, didn't you? Or was that just a joke? No, it's true. I really was naked. Uh, David's not in. I could just wait, pass the time, make the most of having the house to ourselves. <laughs> you don't miss a chance, do you? Nope. And what if David or Tina walked in? Seeing us together could traumatise him for life. What about me being traumatised? My girlfriend pushing me away like this. Girlfriend? Yes. <laughs> it's a long time since I've been a girlfriend. Exactly. <laughs> you ought to behave like a teenager more often. Do you good? Hmm. Do us both good. Really? David's out and about somewhere, and Tina's only in the cabin. Either Rub could walk in. You said you didn't want him to find out about us until David got a job, so I gave him a job, and now you still don't want him to know. Well, maybe I like keeping you and me a secret. Gail, we have nothing to be ashamed of. Even so, I probably think either of us having a love life's a bit icky. Can you imagine them catching us having one together? <laughs> OK, OK. You win, I lose. <laughs> you give up too easily. Did I mention that I might want some wardrobes fitting in my bedroom? Uh, uh, should we take a look? Why not? Where are you, then? Right here. came up behind me and he brought it all back. I still can't believe what he did to you. Class it or what? Take it back. Why? Where'd you nick it? 
Scary combination. Looks like your girlfriend, sounds like your mother. Are you telling me you don't want to drive around in this? No, you'd be arrested after five minutes. Why? Would you rather sleep with him or me? Oh, I bet you're talking to him. Because if you go off in that car, you two will be sharing a cell again before you can say, this time my girlfriend won't wait for me because I'm a stupid pillock. Oh, when you put it like that. Hey, it'll be difficult to take it back. Garage. Seems like a plan. You've not even asked what he's done with your money. <laughs> oh yeah, didn't see your van. Yeah, I, I, uh, I went to the cafe, had a couple, then just walked down. You know why I pay for them when you can get them down here for free? Just what your mum said. Oh, this is uh, Graham, by the way. Uh, I think we've met. I can't think where. Let me out, I'm innocent. Let me out. <laughs> you know, once there'd have been some shame about having been locked up. Reformed character. He's doing all right for himself, though. He's got a belt in motor. We just uh, stuck it in the garage while he stays over. Stays? See, I said she wouldn't have a problem with it. Um, I'll just make us a coffee. All, all the time, David was enjoying Her Majesty's pleasure. He never stopped going on about how much he missed his mum. What a star you were. Top girlfriend, top mum. Top man. Whilst I have no objection in principle to Graham staying here, I would have liked to have been asked first. Sorry. Do I get to be told how long he's staying? Just a couple of days, Mum. You'll hardly notice him. I'd better not. You up for an early start in the morning? Joe, don't ask him. Tell him. You are the boss. I like to keep everyone happy. You do? I'm sure. Anything special? Uh, the wind desk kitchen, another problem. You are joking, it's perfect. Apparently the customer's always right and as they're not paying me until they're happy, half eight. Yeah, see you then. So, Mrs Platt, you made your mind up about the wardrobes yet? Um, I'm still undecided, Mr McIntyre. I'll, um, I'll come back another day. Talk you through my ideas again. Twisted my arm. <laughs> Is he ready? It shouldn't be too long. Just time to say good morning to his mother then, eh? Mm. Mm. Could be down any minute. Ah, we'll hear him a mile off. And Tina and Graham are up there as well. Then how about I come back later? When? Dinner time. It's your afternoon off, isn't it, Wednesday? You're working, aren't you? We'll be finished by one. I thought you had some troublesome clients to deal with. The wind asses. Be somewhere to note, won't take long. Well, if you want to ask me out for lunch, I could have my arm twisted. Morning. You okay? All ready for the freight? Yeah, ready as I'll ever be. Good. Well, that's the wind asses sorted. Get some money in now, any luck. Did you often swing an afternoon off work, then? It's called the prerogative of the self-employed. Fancy a quick pint? Love one. On your 18th birthday. Anyway, I have things to do. All right. Oh, and Joe, don't leave her waiting on my account. Cheeky. So, there was nothing wrong with his kitchen, then? No, it was just loads of little dumb things. Like, they wanted the fridge here to open from right to left instead of left to right. What difference does it make? God knows. <laughs> and you think my dad's gone on a date? I was just winding him up, that's all. He said he had loads of things to do. Hey, do you want to go eat these in car? I'd be the kings of cool. Yeah, well, I did pay 300 quid for it. At least we could do is go sit in it. Hey, I don't forensics finding bits of my hair in it. Well, I'll say I forced you in at gunpoint. All right, come on then. Makes you happy. <laughs> the Brazilian what?
Not on the leather. All right. All I've ever done behind a wheel is just sit round here listening at radio. Except when I went down to Ted's and I actually did some driving. Aren't you forgetting your stuntman audition that time in the canal? You gotta admit, it is sexy though, isn't it? I mean, all this brushed metal and leather. Pity you can't drive it. Well, let's see, why not? Because it's nicked, because you're not insured. Well, we could take it for one quick spin. We? I'm not scared of getting caught, are you? It'd be me that'd get in trouble, not you. And who'd be shepping it to the Young Offenders Institution every week to visit you? You know you're dying to see me three point turns. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that examiner never seen anything like it. Very funny. Uh... He said it's like poetry. Still, if you want to miss out on the three point turns. Oh, let's both die carbon monoxide poisoning. Hear that wine. There you go, pal. Keep the change. Pity the coffee in that place wasn't up to much. What are you suggesting, Mr. McIntyre? Well, I can't drive home yet with half a bottle of wine swimming round my system. Just have to walk then, won't you? Come on, Gail. I'll see if David's there. I'll wait here. Watch for the white smoke. You've not been out in that. No, it's a hologram. Yeah, we're still at work, really. Did anyone see you? This is a first. You bricking it. You know it's Nick's. No. We thought you'd buy it for 300 quid. Well, it's a pity about that scratch. <laughs> oh, you've not scratched it! <laughs> he ran it into a police car. Yeah, there's kebab stains on the leather. <laughs> Chill out! <sighs> I was supposed to take it back earlier. I only borrowed it from my mum's mate while she was on holiday. Now oh, she's come back and reported it missing. Oh, great. Right, just put it back in the garage so no one sees it till I work out what to do. Oh, when do I get my money back? Ah, slight problemo. Ooh, real coffee. Don't want you complaining all afternoon like you did about the restaurant. All afternoon, eh? Figure of speech. Sorry. <sighs> you just gave the game away. 120 back. What was the rest? Well, you know what it's like when you've been inside. What's going on? I can explain. I'd have thought it's pretty obvious what's going on. Tell me this isn't real. It's real. You and him? David. This is what we joke about. You two, I. It's not supposed to actually happen. Tina, listen. Were you going to tell me about your cosy little setup? I was hiding part of the fun. Tina. Good to know you care. Cup of tea, anyone? surfaced yet. I've called him twice already. Tina? Your dad's here. Come on, love. How are we going to iron things out if you don't even speak to me? I've seen this on Jeremy Kyle. It's like I said to Gail. They've got some adjusting to do. I've got some growing up to do. Last. Morning. Did you get my messages? I ain't played them. What's the point? I'm sorry you're upset. You lied to our faces. We didn't enjoy sneaking around. <laughs> All the earache I get about lying. Uh, I'd rather have a thief than a liar. I know. Life isn't always that simple. Total waste of stress, dude. Look at them. They just want to go for long walks in comfortable shoes. 
We're sorry we messed things up. Well, There's no worries. I just have to find a new job now. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, come on. We'll have to go flat hunting as well. Why? Anybody think we were mass murderers? We've fallen in love, OK? Too much information. We're entitled to a love life too, you know. It happens all the time. It happened to you two. I'm going to work. Yeah, I'm going to kill myself. You won't. I'm off to work. Whatever. Talk later? You mean you'll do the talking and I'll do the listening? Come on. Don't worry. I'll have a word, OK? See you later. Thank you. Take care. Oh, brilliant, Mum. Bag yourself another psycho. You've always got to be centre stage, haven't you? No. I've got bad news for you. The sulking, the guilt trips, the silent treatment. It's not going to work. You've got so many good things in your life. Tina's one of them. I'm one of them. You have got the best mum you could ever have. And you resent her feeling happy. After all she's done for you. She's entitled to a life as well, you know. Somebody to hold her, to cherish her. There's enough of her to go round. You're better than this, David. Get a grip. I'll sit out here all day if need be. Gail and me had a pact. To lie to our faces. I know. Oh, great. So now you're going to get me the sack. We both hated the secrecy. We didn't want to make a big deal of it. There wasn't that much to tell at first. We flirted a bit, had a date. It grew stronger and stronger. All right, get the picture. We didn't want our relationship to affect yours. Come on. You can understand that. Gail and I have spent most of our time together talking about you and David, whether we should tell you, how, where, when, whether you're going to be mad or sad. At least now it's all out in the open. Oh, yeah, such a way off. Not. <sighs> Dad, you've been acting different for ages. Wearing new aftershave and new clothes. I skitted you about it. I know. And you told Gail you always ended up hating every woman I went out with. Did I? Hmm. She called a summit, tried to dump me. You put the fear of God into her. No one's died. No one's got cancer. I've fallen in love with your boyfriend's mum. We agreed no more secrets. This is different. I'm on top of things now. I'm not going to mess this one up. Why can't all four of us be happy? You'll always be me number one. Listen, how do you fancy running the bookies for a while? Colleen Nolan's quite fit. You're joking, are you? She's old enough to be a man. Exactly. Knows what she's doing. Hi, boys. All right, Mrs. Pete. What you two need is space. Freak. If you're that unhappy about me seeing Joe... Boring. One minute's a state secret and the next one I'll talk her to death about it. Well, I do have a life of my own, you know. At least I'm supposed to. Yeah, I know. I think the world of Joe. I love him. You said. He makes me laugh. Makes me feel safe. Makes me look forward to the day ahead. Well, they have been in a good mood lately. Now we're starting to think you're on happy pills. <laughs> if you want me to stop seeing him, I will. 
Well, for real. For real. For you. I don't want you moving out, checking in your job. We've put a lot behind us. I won't jeopardise that for any man. Yeah, you'd be all right, Misery, though. You'd be on my case big time. I hope it's perfect. And Gran would be giving it. Oh, the light's gone off inside her. No! I don't think so. Those spotlights are exactly where you wanted them, Mr. Windass. I can show you the original plans. I've sorted every snag you've come up with. What? No, no, you have to pay up today. The workmanship will be there within the hour. Flaming windasses, I have just aged five years. You know, he well milks that cripple routine. What's up with it now? Oh, you name it. Stalling, basically. Can usually see it coming. Right, we tell them straight, pay up. They're gonna try and knock me down, I know they are. Tell them to swivel. I need that seven grand, David. All of it. Every penny is spoken for. So what are we waiting for, then? See that? See what? It's meant to glide. Like Tarblin Dean? It's fine. Well, that cupboard up there, you've got to yank it with all your might. It's an accident waiting to happen. Oh, it's easy for you. You're a fella. There's nothing wrong with that door. There's nothing wrong, full stop. They're playing for time. Dream kitchen, you said. We have fitted the kitchen you ordered. It's time to pay up. We spent more on this kitchen than any car we've ever had. You haven't spent a bean yet. I want me money. Disappointment doesn't even begin to cover it. Th them handles aren't what we picked. I can show you the paperwork. You signed off on them. We're at cross purposes, mate. I'm not your mate. Twisted iron, I said. Gothic. And then you changed your mind. And then I changed it back again. We've got rights. So have I. The right to be paid for a job well done. It's a botched job! Mr Windass, there is nothing wrong with this kitchen. If your wife's gone off it, it isn't my problem. I want the kitchen I ordered. If you'd like different handles, I'll sort it. After you've paid me the seven grand I'm owed. Oh, if you're going to play silly beggars, you, you can do one. Look, he's not a registered charity, all right? He's running a business. Go on, get out! Sue him. I think people like that are frightened of the law. I bet he's well coined in that disability. Seriously, take him to cleaners. By the time he gets to court, I'll have gone under. No way. That seven grand was all that stood between me and ruin. Bankruptcy? I've lost that contract in Mond. You're messing that, you all 12 houses! Mm, they scrapped the whole development. No one's buying anything, least of all kitchens. I turned down three jobs for that London contract. This is bad. That seven grand would have kept me afloat. So, so what then? You just roll over and die? Jo you've got to sue them for every penny! You slugged your guts out on that job. You don't get it. The wheels have come off, David. I lose the business, the roof over me head, the woman I love. What's a no hoper like me got to offer a woman like Gail? You give us a minute and I'm supposed to phone Daryl. We're meant to be on wash tonight. Yeah, no rush. Knock, knock! Who the flaming hell are you playing at? Daddy! 
I'm dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Agent! Vernon, I'm on you. Joe's thinking of changing the name of the business. Kitchens for scumbags, what do you reckon? Sling your hook, lad. Ah, I think it's got legs. Well, speaking of legs, can I just say congratulations on your miracle recovery? Well done. Uh, for your information, he has good days and bad days. Well, have you informed the benefits office the happy news? Don't push it. Me? I'm the one sitting pretty. Well, sitting, anyway, in your seven grand kitchen. And what's it cost you? Ten mugs of tea? Look, things are a bit tight at the moment. Shut it! Well, we're not paying! There's nothing wrong with this kitchen, all right? It's, it's chavvy and horrible, OK, but it's well made and well fitted. How are you going to pay up or what? Put it down on Palumpa. You can't even reach the worktop. Seven thousand pounds. Deal or no deal? Mum? Dad! Move it! Hey? Go, 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 go! Oh my God! Ah, come on, come on! Go, 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 go! Please have a name for what you just did. Obtaining money by menaces. Sorry. There's nothing clever about violence, you know. There's no Nobel Prize for thuggery. I know. More to the point, anything like that scares the life out of me. And me too. So why the hell did you do it? Because, Joe, I couldn't just stand by and watch somebody treat you like that. And I know how much you need that money. And plus, if I'm honest, I like having you around. And so does me man. Spare me the soft soap. I'm being serious. Look, she's been skipping around like a teenager since you came along. And it's nice to see. The fact remains that if customers get the idea that I send bully boys around every time they're late with a payment, you and me's out of business. You're right. I'm sorry. OK. Now, go and treat yourself. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. On condition you never pull a stunt like that again. I don't think we outstand stand it. Right then. Okay, I'm gonna bank this. You can take the rest of the deck off. Thanks, brilliant. And David, dog on telling your mum and Tina we've had money troubles. This is just between you and me, okay? Not a problem. Good lad. See you later. Frightened me, didn't I? So, I gave him my best stare and scared him out after death. Ooh. <laughs> What's your best stare like? Oh, believe me, Graham, you do not want to find out. Oh, yeah, I do. All right, well, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> what? You look like a... What? Like a... a disgruntled glove puppet. <laughs> yeah, like you could do better. Yeah, all right, brace yourself. Oh, yeah, well done. <laughs> hey! So, what exactly did this bloke look like? Evil scum. Brink said there are three basic human needs. The most important is food and shelter. Number two is being loved. And what's number three? On in a widescreen telly, but whoa, one step at a time. I haven't got a girlfriend yet. So what kind of girl are you looking for then? I'm not fussy really, as long as she's a supermodel. <laughs> I like Kate Moss and I reckon she'd like me too. I mean, she's always had a soft spot for dead legs. But, well, she lives in London. I mean, it's a five hour bus journey. So, I've decided on Agnes Dean. She's a local girl. All right, sorted. All you need to do then is find out where she lives, go around her place and ask her out. Nah, that's way too obvious, no. no. What I need to do is, I need to find out where her mum lives, then knock on her door and offer to do her garden. 
free of charge. One day, when I'm weeding the garden, up drives Agnes in a red Ferrari. Agnes's mum says, allow me to introduce you to Graham. He does my garden for nothing. Oh, that's very kind of you. Graham, why don't you come to Paris with me? And off we go. Anyway, enough about me. Let's hear about you. So, after you gave him your baddest stare, what happened next? I already told you twice. Oh, go on. Yeah, tell us again. I looked at him and I said, uh, are you going to pay me or are you going to get battered and still pay me? It's up to you, Windass. Say that again. Windass. The Windass is a bad bandido, senor. They are not the kind of people you mess with. <laughs> it must be a wrong family, mate. Nothing scary about the bloke I saw. Uh, Eddie, you were called. Eddie's not so bad. But Gary, his son, he's a maniac. And his uncle, Len, he's even worse. Yeah, yeah. A mate of mine, right, had this ice cream van. Well, Len told him not to play his jingle when he drove past his house. My mate ignored him. So, Len and Gary hijacked his van and took him for a little ride. Oh yeah? And what happened? No wait, let me guess. The force fed him 99s and drove him round round the park till he was sick. <laughs> no one knows what happened. My mate refused to talk about it. But a week later, my mate sold his ice cream van and now he just stays at home. Never answers the phone, never leaves the house. Yeah, so what? So, if I were you, I'd put that money in an envelope, shove it through their letterbox and flaming leg it. I'm not scared of lying, cheating, low lives, all right? You are a plucky little jockey. And it's been very nice knowing you. Big, was it? Not exactly, but what size got to do with it? Hey, the Cray twins were only five foot seven. Or was he bigger than that or smaller? Smaller? How much smaller? About an inch. 20s, 30s, 40s? No, he was younger than that. Younger than 20? A bit. Sounds to me like you lot have just been mugged by a little Jimmy Cranky. Nah, he was armed. What with? <sighs> a stick. A stick! Oh, well, not a stick. Dad said it was more like a, a rod. <laughs> like one of the metal ones that you used to pry stuff open with. It would have hurt. You big Jesse. Hello. Hello. What are you looking so cheerful about? <laughs> Seeing you for one thing. <laughs> what do you doing this weekend? Not a lot, as usual. Why? I wonder if you fancy a few nights on the Cornish Riviera. My treat. That'd be wonderful. Can you afford it? Oh, yes, things are picking up nicely. David's a good lad. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to look so hey, that's him. <laughs> Where? Him over there, that's the joker who sold us the kitchen. I thought you said he was a kid. No, that's the kid's boss, the fella who set him on to us. Mm. Come on, what are you waiting for? Well, not now yet, Lennon. There are witnesses. We need to wait until he's on his own. He's laughing, see? He won't have much to laugh about <laughs> by the time we finish with it. <laughs>